This is Mason Steele, and welcome to the second of three of a full set review for Kobolds and Catacombs. Just like last time, we're going to start from the lowest casting cost all the way up to the highest casting cost. And this is going to be filmed right before the Monday where all the cards are going to be revealed. So there's going to be one more review left on uh, probably coming out Monday or Tuesday. So stay tuned. So starting off here, Cobalt Librarian. One mana, 2-1. Two, Draw a card and deal two damage to your hero. This is a really good deal, and I think this is going to see play in every single Warlock deck as long as it's legal. Um, it's just it's just an upgraded hero power, right? For one mana, you kind of draw a card, deal two damage, just like your hero power, but you get a one, you get it for cheaper, half the price, and you get a two one. So yeah, it seems like it just goes in every single Warlock deck from now to eternity. So Warlock decks are now 28 cards. Kind of unfortunately, I don't kind of unfortunate. Because I don't think that's the way you should design cards where a card is so good that it just just always sees play. Even in control, you're just gonna want this, right? Like it's just it's just too good and it's gonna always see play. Unstable evolution, one mana, transform a friendly minion into one that costs one more. Repeat this repeatable this turn. So basically what that means is as long as you have mana, this card will keep coming back to your hand and you can keep playing it until the end of the turn, in which case you would lose it. So Definitely a nice little filler card. I don't think it's as strong as Evolve. Evolve has the you know the opportunity to go doppelganger evolve on turn six just to get a lot of power. Whereas this, you definitely have to work harder. But the cool thing about this is you can keep trying, right? Like if you uh, have a couple creatures, maybe a three and a four drop, you evolve the three drop, you get something good. Well, you move on to the next guy. And if you don't get something good, well, you try again until you get something good. So you can kind of sculpt sculpt it out and if you keep getting charged minions then you can keep charging your opponent's face which is kind of hilarious so this is going to lead to a lot of funny stories where somebody lives the dream and goes from you know wisp uh, to all the way up to king crush getting a charge every time maybe not maybe that's a uh, maybe that the odds of that are kind of insane but it could happen so this is a cool card will it see play it's very flexible and um the worst case scenario you just evolve something once for one mana that's not absolutely the worst because it's kind of like healing your minion to full but i do think car this card is very playable but it's no evolve right it's evolve is much better than this but it's this is still good king's bane here a one mana legendary warrior weapon death rattle shuffle this into your deck it keeps any enchantments um warrior not exactly the class that buffs its weapon at least currently that much right you have captain Greenskin, you have upgrade but again these are just one attack that is pretty cool um, so until we see sort of like a, a deadly weapon type of card or a just something that gives two to three or more attack, it's not great. Like on turn one, it's fine. Having a sort of lights justice on turn one is good. But putting this back in your deck as a lights justice, that's not good at all. So it, this card, it's it, I don't think we have all the information. So I think to, to try to rate it right now, it's going to be a little bit hard. I won't, I won't say it's unplayable, but currently I think it is unplayable. Uh, I'll go ahead and give it two stars, but I think it, it, in, with the current amount of cards we have right now, I do think this is unplayable. It is very interesting, and it doesn't take much for it to be pretty cool. Uh, so what's, so what's, let's say, let's say Warrior had Deadly Poison. So you make a 3-3 three, three weapon starting as early as turn two. That's actually really good. And this goes back into your deck as a one mana free pack three durability. Now later in the game, you might not need sort of the fiery war axe type of weapon, but it is still very efficient and uh, it would be good. So we're kind of missing some support with this. So it does have big upside, but right now it isn't playable unless we get something that synergizes really well in the early turns with this, right? Cobalt Hermit, 2 mana 1-1, one, one. Battlecry, choose a basic totem and summon it. Now there's going to be some basic totem synergies coming um, coming soon here with Shaman, so we'll keep that in mind. But the card by itself, is it any good? Well, because it can get exactly spell power totem, I think this does have a lot of value. It's two bodies. The stats kind of make sense a little bit, right? You can get a 1-3 worth of stats over two bodies for two. Not the worst in the world. Um, the fact that you can get taunt whatever you want is pretty cool, but I think you know you're you're gonna play this because you want the spell power so if you're looking for a card with spell power synergies here you go now there are cards coming later that that require you to have all four basic totems so we'll keep that card in mind so I think at the very least this guy is a role player but he's he's very close to sort of unplayable right I think tainted zealot 
does what this guy wants to do a little bit better. Dry Whisker Armorer, two mana, battle cry for each enemy minion, gain two armor. This guy battles almost directly with Armor Smith. Um, what saves this guy from being uh, unplayable is a card coming up, coming up in Warrior, a board clear card, which would be a two card combo with this guy. So this that makes it for sure a role player. Um, would you play this guy without that specific card that I'm kind of foreshadowing? I don't think so. Um, but it is interesting. It is interesting because it's so cheap and it has the opportunity to gain, you know, 8 to 10 armor. Um, if you're in that situation, you're, you're rather like Brawl. He is very good right before Brawl. So now that, I, now that I'm talking through this, maybe this guy is actually pretty good. Uh, maybe I'm going to bump this to 3 stars here. Definitely playable and constructed. I think because of two interactions. One, Brawl. You live the Brawl dream. It's like Armorsmith. People used to say if you play Armorsmith before Brawl, he would always win. Well, this guy kind of does the same thing. You play it. Assume, you Assuming you're behind on the board, you get a bunch of armor, you Brawl. Hopefully this guy wins the Brawl and, or ups the odds that something big doesn't win the Brawl, right? So between Brawl and the uh, board clear card coming up makes this guy, I guess, very playable. Yeah, we'll, we'll upgrade him to three stars here. Evasion is the final secret here Rogue's going to have in the new set. After your hero takes damage, become immune this turn. So kind of interesting, kind of unfortunate in the early game. You can't do it like an ice block where you play ice block ahead of time when you have the mana available. This thing you really have to save until you're about to die. The fact that it can be ice block means that it's definitely a playable card. And uh, you will have to sort of watch out for this. So very scary card. Bladed Gauntlet for 2 mana. You get an 0-2. But it says, has attack equal to your armor. Well... That's no Fiery War Axe at all. There are some upsides to this. In the if you have armor in the late game, you can kind of get an attack for sort of cheap. I don't really like this card, especially because it's it's not good in the early game. It's only for the late game, in which case maybe a Gore Howl is just a safer card. Yeah, I don't like this card because it's kind of negative synergy too. Because it's a weapon that worries about armor. So let's say you had 5 armor and you attack a 5-5. Five five. Well... You kill the 5-5, five, five, great, for 2 mana, that's a good deal, but now you have no armor. I think I would rather just play Shield Slam than this card. Do you have room for both Shield Slam and this? Possibly. I'm not seeing it. It's definitely, I'm going to say it's definitely a role player card, because if you build your deck with this in mind, you can make this good. Like, if you put every single armor gain card in your deck, you can definitely get a lot of value out of this, but... I don't think it's playable on its own, right? You're going to have to warp your deck around it, which is fine. Uh, which is fine for an epic. Void Ripper, another epic here. Three mana, three, three. Swap attack and health of all other minions. So you get Confuse on a body, and the body's fine, right? It's a three mana, three, three. So this is very awesome. It pops eggs if you got them. Gets through some nasty taunts if you need to. So yeah, it's a very versatile card here. I think this might replace Crazed Alchemist in decks that sort of uh, played Crazed Alchemist. It kills Doomsayer as well. It's also a demon, which is kind of cool. Uh, zoo decks are decks that definitely uh, have room for Crazed Alchemist effects. So this guy definitely will see play. He's definitely constructed playable. Greedy Sprite. Here we have another Druid Ramp card. Oh boy. Uh, so this is really good because uh, three mana Wild Growth is almost a good deal. And three mana, three one, Death Rattle Wild Growth is uh is a little bit better right so you don't get the wild growth you have to have this die but it, you know no one's gonna leave a three one around i don't think kind of interesting do you do you let this live and hit you over and over just so they don't get the mana crystal i don't think so right it's gonna be it's gonna be too easy to trade this into something to get your crystal a really good card not much to say here it doesn't work quite well uh with wild growth right because when you wild growth on two you get to four mana. Now, if you coin out wild growth, this guy's really good because then on uh, turn two, you can play him and go from there. So, so yeah, this guy's really good. Not much to say. It's just another really good ramp card, and uh, you should play it in Druid. Twilight's Call: Summon one, one, summon one, one copies of two friendly Death Rattle minions that die this game. So a little wordy there, but basically, um, the goal with this is to sort of help your priest quest. And it basically get value, right? Because the kind of death rattles you're going to be getting back, assumably, are sort of the loot hoarder, uh, oracle kind of cards that replace themselves. So, so yeah, just more ways for priests to steal the cards from your deck because of oracle and stuff like that. And uh, the four three. But I think this card uh, is is definitely a role player card. 
you definitely have to sort of do the quest priest to play this. The other thing you can get is the uh, obsidian statues if you're playing like a Barnes priest. But I think I think you don't need that, right? If you're already if you're already resurrecting those obsidian statues, you don't you don't technically need even though it's really good to get a one a one one that kind of kills a creature when it dies. That's really good, but I don't think you need that in that deck. This is gonna fit more into a quest priest deck or just getting tons of value, right? Seems pretty seems pretty cool. Reckless Flurry, spend all your armor, deal that much damage to all minions. So pretty cool little board clear here. It's unfortunate that it doesn't spend as much armor as you kind of want it to. It just spends all your armor, right? So if you had 30 armor and you kind of needed to do 5 damage to everything, well, oh well, you just lose all your armor. But I think that's still good enough, right? Getting the board back. And that's the important thing about this card is it costs 3. So you get the board back, right? You play this, clear the board, and then you develop yourself. And all of a sudden, you're in a winning position. Whereas a lot of times with Brawl, you didn't have much mana left over sort of redevelop after the brawls so this also makes the 2-2 very much playable um, because it combos with both brawl and this card primal talismans give your minions death rattle summon a random basic totem so this starts to get interesting once you have three to four creatures it kind of competes directly with spirit echoes spirit echoes would be a more value card where this is a more tempo oriented card where you sort of uh, guarantee you're gonna have a board or hope to guarantee you have a board after after assumably get board cleared so it's pretty cool it's going to combo with a card coming up later it is a role player card leyline manipulator four mana four five elemental mage card well this is already yeti stat so it's already really good in that sense battle cry if you're holding any cards that didn't start in your deck reduce their cost by two so that's really good both in elemental decks for sure mage have access to two very strong four drop elementals between this and a water element you have at least one card to get a reduction on that's really good so so yeah, so it seems seems like a really good card here, and it, it will definitely see a lot of play. Ironwood Golem, a four mana three six taunt, so uh, upgraded Senjin Shield Master here, and uh, can only attack if you have three or more armor. So Druid are kind of building a sort of gain armor theme throughout this set, and they have reasons to uh, care about armor. Is it worth it to get one extra toughness on a Senjin Shield Master? I don't think so. Druid has other things to do uh, in other classes this might be a little bit more interesting but uh, I don't think druid needs this card not that it's a bad card I just think it's in the wrong class hoarding dragon death rattle give your opponent two coins this is a five six dragon for four so that's a good deal I think what saves this card is a couple things the dragon tag is awesome because it's not a battle cry it's actually a death rattle if you just beat your opponent's brains in with this and they lose the game with this on the board well the fact that it would have gave them coins didn't matter right giving your opponent coins is a very scary thing especially against a class like druid if they can uh, ramp up to ultimate infestation or something like that even quicker but because it's a death rattle because it's a dragon this definitely will find a home. It's, I think it's much better than a Hungry Dragon because, again, it's a death rattle, not a battle cry. Your opponent actually has to deal with it before they get the rewards. Baldori Strider. I might have gotten the name wrong. Apologies if I did. Battle cry, shuffle three ambushes into your deck when drawn, summon a 4 4 spider. It's, a, it's already a 4 mana 4 4. So this is kind of like the Beneath the Grounds, except instead of ambushing your opponent's deck, you ambush your own deck. Now that makes it a little bit worse when you're ambushing your own deck. The creatures come out on your turn and they can't attack. Whereas if they came out on your opponent's turn, you sort of could kind of get them to attack immediately, right? If they didn't deal with them. This card's really good. It only has to activate one time for it to be absolutely insane. And anytime it gets two or three spiders during a game, it's uh, going to be pretty crazy. This is, uh, this is, I think, a must-play card just because of the... Just because you just get so much value from it, right? Like, yeah, I, I don't see how you don't just play this card. A 4 mana 4-4 four, four is fine. A lot of cases, it's better than a 4 mana 3-5, which is sort of uh, assumed to be better stats, right? You you assume the sort of more toughness is better than a uh, more attack. But because of uh, the priest being out there, the 4 really matters. This card is really good and really scary. And I think it's poorly designed because of... Uh, because of the games where we, where it's going to actually happen, where you're just going to have four four fours in the, in, in a, a small you know a small percentage of the time, this is going to draw like three spiders real quick, 
and uh, you just win the game. So what's kind of scary is Blizzard, we assume they test this card. Maybe we're walking into a Hearthstone world where this is not good, and that's kind of scary. Maybe a hyper, hyper controlly board clear type of situation, but but I mean in control matchups, this is things like exactly what you want anyway. So yeah, seems really good. Seems like a mistake. Another four cost rogue card, Elven Mistral. It's not going to compete with the Strider directly because it has combo. So you're likely going to need to spend at least five mana to get this guy out. It is a combo draw two minions from your deck. Interesting that it says minions and not cards. There's some deck building opportunities there. And it's a 3-2. The 3-2 is not great and that's what holds this card from being amazing back. If it was a four mana 3-3, three, three, it'd be really good. Uh, being a 3-2, it's only pretty good. Alter Arms, 4 mana, Paladin Epic, recruit 3 minions that cost 2 or less from your deck. This, I think, is the best card in the expansion so far because of the the high ceiling and low floor, right? You're not only drawing 3 cards, we, we, we can assume drawing 3 is worth about 3 mana. You're playing them as well, so it has the opportunity to be worth 10 mana. Uh, drawing 3 2 drops, putting them directly into play, right? That's, that's like a 10 mana card for 4. The worst case scenario is is something like you get a bunch of Argent Squires or Sacred Protectors, you know those one one taunt or those one one Divine Shields. Some of them have taunt. That's already good too. So even even the, sort of the worst case scenario, you get a bunch of one drops instead of two drops. This card is really good. This is a uh, definitely a five star card. You can even warp your deck around this. Play stuff like Dirty Rat and a Millhouse Mana Storm. Right, you get that four four body onto the field without having to worry about the battle cry. I don't think there's anything to hold this card back, right? Now, Priest, the Dusk, the Dusk Breaker, right, kind of walks into this, but uh, because of Divine Shield and stuff like that, and because you could actually play Millhouse, right, I think it actually avoids the sort of Dusk Breaker downside, right? This card's really good, and I think it's a mistake. I think it's 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 undercosted. The fact that this Epic is kind of annoying too. Now everyone's gonna need to make this. So yeah, a lot of a lot of sort of mistakes here, but it's a very good card. You compare to the uh, the last version of this, the three mana put three one ones in your hand, and this is like a thousand times better for one extra mana. You can get two drops, and they come directly into play, right? So it's just kind of crazy how good the card is. Oaken summons, gain six armor, recruit a minion that costs four or less. So this is cool because uh, at, at the very least you gain six armor and a minion. Now if you build your deck around this, so that's it's really good because you're only going to get your four drops that you specifically put in your deck right so that's pretty cool and uh because you're getting armor maybe it didn't matter that all you did was wild growth the first couple turns so this card seems really good and i think people are definitely now recruit seems to have the problem where it wants you to warp your deck but so far the rewards haven't been that good for warping your deck around the card now this card warping your deck around it actually makes a lot of sense so I think this card is really good and we'll see a lot of play. We have another Spellstone here, the Warlock Spellstone. It's a 4 mana. Life steal, deal 3 damage to a minion. So you can't go face with this only onto a minion. When you upgrade it, it steals 5. And when you upgrade it again, it steals 7. So it kind of ramps up. That's pretty strong. And you take damage from cards to upgrade it. So we look back at 1 mana. We have the nice little Cobalt there. Lucky enough to upgrade this guy as well as just your Hero Power. So this card is definitely good. First step of this is not great, but it's fine, right? Like, there's a lot of times on turn four, you can sort of use this to pretty good effect. And from that point on, it's really good. Cataclysm, destroy all minions, discard your hand. So, we have a really good effect and a really bad effect strapped onto the same card for four mana. Really hard to judge how good this card is because destroy all minions for four is absolutely insane. And discard your hand is absolutely miserable, right? And if you had no hand, you likely played a bunch of creatures, which in turn would mean you would not need to destroy all creatures. So very interesting card. I think it fits exactly in the uh, the discard warlock deck, where the discard in your hand becomes a bonus to some extent. So this is, I think, only playable in a discard warlock deck. Is it good in that deck? I, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Very hard card to judge. I will give it a role player uh, status because Destroy All Minions is super powerful. 
Um, in the late game, you could play this and then tap and then hope to draw something to play immediately. Five mana, Wind Shear Storm Collar. This 5 5 Battle Cry Shaman card. If you control all four basic totems, summon Alakir the Wind Lord. Now that's a really good deal for five mana. How, how realistic is it to have all four basic totems on turn five? I don't think very realistic at all because uh, you're likely not toteming up if you're if you're if you're looking to control the board right you probably have one or two totems but you won't have all four now there are cards that are summoning totems now we had that two drop that made a totem primal talismans is the card you're really looking to combo with this card if you have four minions talismans all four you're gonna get all four basic totems and then boom this guy can go off so very cool little synergy here with that um, it's not going to make a home in all the Shaman decks, but if you're already playing Primal Talismans, then this card fits in very well. Ixlid, Fungal Lord, 5 mana, 2, 4, Elemental. So Drew get another Elemental here. After you play... Actually, they don't have many Elementals at all, so that's interesting. When you play the Discover an Elemental card, um, you might al almost always see this as a choice, right? Because there's not many Druid Elementals. After you play a minion, summon a copy of it very powerful effect it is awkwardly costed and statted right it's very small and it's very pricey but if you can hide this behind something like spreading plague and, and have a full mana bar going into the next turn your opponent's in a lot of trouble so very high upside on this card and i think it's actually pretty good because uh just b because of how scary it is uh, if it lives and i think druid right now they have the tools to protect this guy so i think this is card we'll see a lot of play Burborg Mossbinder, Battlecry, transform a friendly minion into a 6-6 six, six elemental. So you can uh, mess up your opponent's Mare in the Fox dreams with this if you change their chest into a 6-6. Six, six. That'd be pretty cool. If, if you're playing enough evolution effects, that's when this guy sort of gets interesting. The fact that unstable evolution also exists now helps this guy out a lot because while you want to save the evolve for Doppelgangster, this kind of uh, works well with the unstable evolution right sort of a more center uh, more focused approach like you play this at six you evolve the one one into a six drop and then you get a six six lesser onyx spellstone five mana destroy one random enemy minion this rogue this rogue spellstone is not good at all on the first step right it's an overpriced deadly shot now a five mana deadly shot could be good but in general it's not what you want to be doing the problem with this card is the steep upgrade cost play three death row cards to upgrade you have to kind of have this in your hand at the beginning of the game to really get it going at all. If you ever, if you're ever gonna hope to get this to the third step, it's pretty much gonna, gonna have to be in your starting hand. Getting the third step is gonna be so difficult. Playing six death battle cards after you already have this in your hand. I mean, if you think about it, the the, the priest quest wants you to play seven, so you basically have to complete the priest quest to get this thing done. So I think that's what holds this card back. I don't like this card that much. I think Vile Spine Slayer is just way better. At doing this kind of thing and it has more synergies because of shadow step and 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 other and, and other sort of uh shadow step like cards even in this set as well lesser emerald spellstone summon two three three wolves now on the other hand this hunter spellstone actually has a decent first step you're gonna go from two to three to four wolves and uh, you're gonna be kind of happy along the way each time if you have to play this on turn five to get three three beasts two three three beasts that's fine Right, your opponent is not going to want to let you have a beast at all, so they're going to they're gonna trade into it. So you kind of get a good deal there. If you get three, you get an even better deal. If you get four, you get a great deal. All you have to do to upgrade this is play a secret. So I think out of all the spell stones, this is currently the best one we've seen so far. This card might actually force yourself to play secrets as well, so it's that strong. Dragon's Fury, five mana, mage spell. Reveal a spell from your deck. Deal damage equal to its cost to all minions. An interesting card. Very interesting card because it's got a push and pull going to it. You sort of don't want to be playing minions in your deck. You want to be only playing big cost of spells. But if that's the case, then what did you do through turns 1 through 4? Well, you can play sort of value cards. Stuff like Loot Hoarder, Novice Engineer. Cards you don't really care if they stay on the board. They're kind of just road bumps. Cards like uh, Secrets are also fine to play. Uh, Archaeologist obviously would be fine to play. So... Not very hard to sort of warp your deck around this. Now, if you're playing secrets, there's a chance you could reveal a secret, in which case you don't get that huge AoE. You only get sort of an Excavated Evil. Excavated Evil was already a very playable card, so um, I don't think secrets hold this card back. 
and you even have the choice to sort of ignore the secrets and play even bigger spells so you get huge clears. So this is going to be a very, a very fun card. Definitely a card that's going to create new decks out there. Blizzard is, ver is very much pushing a 5 mana mage deck. It's going to take a lot of epics. So this is kind of the pay to win deck. Might be the 5 mana mage spell deck. But it looks cool. Another 5 mana mage spell. Another epic. Not as good. In fact, I think it's pretty bad. Deck of Wonders. Shuffle 5 scrolls into your deck. When drawn, cast a random spell. So a lot of things going against this card. Uh, it's like RNG to the power of 2 because the RNG is uh, when you draw the scrolls. And the RNG is what spell you get and what targets they get. So I think the reason why Yog saron works so well is because you're, uh, over the long term you're going to get a good result. Whereas a single shot can be a disaster, right? We saw with the 5 mana 5-4 five, that Mage had that, that basically did a scroll effect. It never saw play. It had a high ceiling, but the floor is terrible. The floor is you play a guy, it kills itself. Whereas this, you might be winning on board. You might draw a, uh, a Twisting Nether randomly, and all of a sudden you're like, why did I spend five mana to lose the game You know, a few turns later? So it, it's, it's not very good. It's very fun, though. Very silly card, but not very good at all. It's kind of like the, the Renounced Darkness and uh, Explore Angura kind of thing, where it's fun, but I think... It's pretty bad, right? Skull of the Mana Ear. This legendary warlock weapon at the start of your turn. Summon a demon from your hand. Ooh, a lot of things wrong with this. Uh, so many things. Start of your turn. So you don't even get the end of turn thing going like a lot of the other things going on. We had the Jakari Enchanter from the last set. It's a little unfortunate this doesn't do at the end of your turn. I don't know why it doesn't because it's kind of, kind of really bad. If your opponent removes the weapon, you spent five mana and you got nothing, right? The mage weapon, you get three cards, uh, even if they kill it. Whereas this, you just get nothing if they kill it. And the demon has to be in your hand, so you are getting tempo, but you're not getting value, right? It'd be cool if it summoned it from your deck. So you get both tempo and value. A lot of things wrong with this card. It's not good, and I don't think it's playable in the slightest. Hungry Eaton, this neutral 6 drop 410 taunt is very cool and I think it's going to replace Sunwalker as sort of the best uh, neutral taunt at 6 mana. You assume your opponent's going to get a 2-2 two, two worth of stats. Possibly they could get, you know, like Millhouse or something, but in general they're going to get about a 2-2. A two, two. They could get a 1-1. One, one. There are a lot of 1-1s one, out there for 2, but in general you got to assume they're going to get a 2-2. Two, two. So you assume this kind of is a 4-8 taunt for 6. And I do believe that is better than Sunwalker. The 4-5 Divine Shield can be better in very small certain situations. But I think in general, this guy is a better Sunwalker. Sunwalker is a card that is actually close to constructed playability, especially for new players. So this card is going to be a welcome addition for the new player collection. And uh, it, it could definitely see play. If you cheat this out, there's no battle cry, right? It's just a 4-10 taunt. There are a lot of ways to cheat things out. We have Recruit coming up here in the new set. And uh, so yeah, this card's really good. And it's it, it's going to see constructive play, at the very least, at the new player level. And I do think it actually will find a, find a home in, uh, in, in, in some small amount of uh, constructive decks in general. So I do think this card's good. Crystal Lion. Whoa, we have a very scary card here. Six, six mana, but not really. Uh, Divine Shield 5-5. Five, five. No, uh, no uh, tribal tag. Cost one less for each silver hand recruit you control. At the very least, I think this is going to be a uh, five mana five five, four mana five five. Not that hard to have a recruit at some point in the game. Between this and the jailer, right? With the jailer, it, you kind of have that sea giant effect where every time you play a one mana one one with the jailer, this guy gets cheaper. So this card is very good, and it will see a lot of play. Unidentified shield six mana warrior spell. I need to bring up my cheat sheet here. First one here, gain five armor. Gain 10 more armor, so for 6 mana you gain 15 armor. Uh, I think out of all the 4, I think this is the worst one, but it does have its uses, right? Gain 5 armor, deal 5 damage, so very much like the Priest spell. So that seems good. Gain 5 armor, summon a 5-5 five five golem, so this is basically Shield Maiden, which did see a lot of play. So, so far that's the best one, I think. And then Spiked Shield, gain 5 armor, equipped a 5-2 weapon. That one's pretty good too, right? So I think three of these kind of do the same thing. You kind of 
gain 5 armor and get sort of 5 attack worth of things, whether it's direct damage, whether it's a 5-5, five five, or whether it's a weapon. Weapon has the upside of, uh, you know, working over 2 turns. Overall, a very strong card, a card that we'll definitely see play. The tower shield is sort of the, the oddball of the of the four. To my sides, interesting card here, six mana spell for Hunter, summon an LP Panion or two if your deck has no minions. No minions. So not just like play X amount of minions or X or less minions. No minions. Right? So we definitely have a card that is actually forcing you to create a new archetype. Um, you could do the barn charge thing and just play this only after you sort of blown your load with uh, barn charge but uh, I don't know man is this worth it it's this is like impossible to judge until we kind of get into the lab and build these decks we have to assume that this is possible because Blizzard actually made it but how good is summon two animal companions I think unlike call of the wild because you don't get exactly all three this has uh, sort of more downside. Call of the Wild, they kind of work together, right? You get the taunt, you get the, the charge, and you get the one that buffs both the taunt and the charge. Whereas with this, you might get two Huffers, you might get two taunts, you might get two Leox, right? Two Leox in the right situation can be crazy with Unleash the Hounds. Maybe all you need is uh, two Huffers to win the game, do eight damage. But it's random, whereas with Call of the Wild, you kind of knew what you were getting. You could plan around that Huffer five damage charge. You could plan around that Leoc buffing your, your team. You could plan around having a taunt for the uh, for the next turn. So much weaker than Call of the Wild, um, but it is – and it's, it's not much of a deal, right? Like you're spending six – for two animal companions, whereas with Call of the Wild, I guess Call of the Wild got nerfed, so it is the same. It is the same sort of a uh, ratio as Call of the Wild. Yeah, I don't know about this card. I'm gonna say that it's a role player because it has to be because you have to change your entire deck to play it. And we'll give Blitter some credit here. Um, we'll say it's a role player because if it exists, the deck that it goes in must be uh, kinda good? I don't know, man. I don't know. This this is uh, this is a weird one. Paladin Legendary Weapon, Volunteer, six mana, four two. So we have a, kind of a true silver stats here for six. Death Rat, I'll give a minion in your hand, plus four, plus two. When it dies, re-equip this. Whoa, this is like the ultimate value card. This card's really good, and um, it's going to really make you think about what creatures you play too because the 4-2 buff isn't the, sort of the best allocations of stats unless you're actually playing charged minions in which case it's like kind of the perfect allocation of stats, right? You you get this uh, buffed on a Leroy or you get this buffed on a, even an Argent Commander or a Wolf Rider or something. All of a sudden, you're smashing your opponent for, you know, 7 to 10 damage. They have to kill your, your huge power guy and then you get the weapon again to do it all over again so yeah so this card's really good and in fact it might it might kind of spawn new archetypes some charging paladin decks right this works really well with the lifesteal guy the, the charging 3-2 becomes a 7-4 charged lifesteal holy moly that's a nightmare for your opponent because it goes face it heals you they have to kill it it heals you again assuming they use a creature and then uh, the the weapon goes back um, and you can attack with it again. So, but yeah, it even kind of synergizes with other weapons because you can attack with it, equip the weapon, the creature in your hand gets buffed, and then all of a sudden you can charge again. So, I think the more weapons you play with this, kind of the better it gets, right? Because you can kind of like supercharge your hand with those four two buffs. So, a really strong card, and definitely we'll see a lot of play. I'm gonna give this five stars. I like this card a lot. Linessa Sun Sorrow, a seven mana one one. So this is kind of a uh, nerf to evolve, and a, maybe a buff to devolve in some corner cases, right? Cast each spell. So it's a battle cry. Cast each spell you cast on your minions this game, on this one. All right. So that's really good because of exactly one card, right? Because of exactly Spike Ridge Steed at six mana, even so it even curves. Uh, this card's really good. All you need to do is play one Spike Ridge Steed, and you get a 7-mana 3-7 Taunt that when it dies summons a 2-6 Taunt. That's good. So if you've cast more things, then all the better, right? If you've cast the uh, Blessing of King, Blessing of Wisdom, 
kind of gets crazy with this thing because it's so big. Yeah, but because of Spike Ridge Steed, guarantee will guarantee the cease play. Because you can play two Spike Ridge Steeds, the ratio works out, right? We have two cards to one. You can realistically play a Steed on six into this this lady on seven. So this card is very good, and we'll see a lot of play. Another card that we'll definitely see play is Psychic Scream, seven mana Priest AOE. Another board clear, boys. Shuffle all minions into your opponent's deck. So it's kind of in tomb on steroids, right? If your opponent has a bunch of recruits or a bunch of uh, weasel type cards, then all the better for you because now you're messing up their draws as well, which is very, very relevant. Moving on, we have another seven mana scary priest spell. So that's another seven mana spell from priest. So we have to keep that in mind for the neutral cards that kind of want you to play high cost spells, right? Resurrect two different friendly minions cast four spells to upgrade so quite a steep uh, thing to upgrade it but when you upgrade it it's really good you go from two to three to four resurrects all for one card now we've just come off a standard environment with a very hated deck the Barnes priest or big priest or big easy priest and this card kind of fits right into it almost scaredly so right um, even at the first step they can resurrect two Lich Kings uh, or two you know two of the obsidian statues so fits right in there and very likely to actually be upgraded by the time that is cast for the first time right if this isn't if this is close to drawn at the beginning of the game not that hard for that deck to cast four spells casting eight spells that takes quite a lot of time but but it is possible here comes the warrior legendary card geo sculptor yip Okay, it's a funny name there. 8 mana, 4, 8. At the end of your turn, summon a random minion with cost equal to your armor up to 10. So is this any good? Well, at 10 mana, you can play this and armor up for at least 2 and get a 2 drop. Uh, not ideal. Uh, you're likely to only play this once you're going to get sort of a, a big drop. But if you do hit that big drop, that's very good, right? 8 mana, 4, 8. It's not terrible on its own. But, uh, but getting a free... 10 drop or more is very very good especially starting from turn 8 so this card is good in the right deck and you just hope you're ahead when you get there right moving on to the 9 drops void lord 9 mana 3 9 demon with taunt and when it dies you get 3 1 1 demons with taunt so this is kind of the ultimate card to prep for Gul'dan when you play Gul'dan you want as many taunts as possible so you don't die and this kind of does the job, right? If you if this guy comes back with Gul'dan, or the one threes also come back with Gul'dan, well, you're, you're not gonna your opponent's not gonna be able to hit you for a very long time, right? Because they have to get through this, they have to get through the other one three taunts, and they have to get through the three one the, the three one threes that come from the uh, the original Void Lord. And if you have two Void Lords, well, then it's pretty absurd. In Wild, this guy is gonna be absolutely busted with. Mal Malganus because you're gonna have Malganus hidden behind an infinite amount of taunts so that's kind of scary so this guy is guaranteed to see play at the very least in wild in standard I think it kind of all makes sense right uh, at nine mana again you're just getting ready for Gul'dan playing a sort of irrelevant power guy three is w a lot more than two but yeah it's it's just a lot of value and it definitely see play dragon hatcher at the end of your turn recruit a dragon it's a two four so kind of interesting card here, right? You assume your deck is going to have big dragons in it, and you play this on turn 9. You get a 2-4. That's a threat because it's going to keep recruiting, and then you're going to get your real threat, the dragon, coming from your deck, right? You pull a Ysera, or you pull Alexstrasza, or something big. But your opponent has to deal with both the little thing, the 2-4, and the big thing. This guy works best with exactly Primordial Drake, right? Because you're going to pull out a huge taunt to protect this guy, for him to possibly come out again. If you have Dracari Enchanter already in play, well, that's really cool because now you have you have two cards that you can protect, right? The, the Dracari Enchanter and the Dragon Hatcher. Now, how many dragons do you have to play to, to make use out of this for multiple turns? It's hard to say, but how many turns do you need if you're summoning a dragon, a huge dragon at the end of every turn, right? So I do think this card is good enough to see play because it kind of makes sense, the stats alone kind of make sense, right? For 9 mana, you kind of get a 9 drop dragon as long as, as well as a, a card that's a must kill for your opponent, like a brand bronze beard, right? Last card I'm going to review today is the 9 drop dragon collar Elena. 
The 3-3 three, three is not very big, but it's got a huge battle cry. Summon a 5-5 five, five dragon for each spell you cast this game that costs 5 or more. So like I was saying, Blizzard is kind of forcing this 5 mana spell mage archetype down our throats. It's going to take a lot of epics, and now it's going to take a legendary. So it's going to be quite the pay-to-win deck, but it looks like a lot of fun, and uh, it's definitely something that we should probably try if we have the means to try it, because this is very powerful. This card does dodge Dragonfire Potion very well, right? You're getting a bunch of 5-5 five, five dragons. How many spells do you need to cast before this is good? Well, I think once you hit three spells, it's quite insane. At two spells, it's fine, um, right? You're getting 13, 13 worth of stats for nine. Kind of like a Nixia kind of card, but once you hit that third spell, comes really strong because then you get into the situation where you can kill your opponent almost in one go. Thanks for tuning in to the re second review here. We're going to have another review probably coming out either tomorrow or Tuesday. I'll do my best to get that out on Monday, but we are having the full set revealed tomorrow and I uh, hope you guys will tune in for the final review where I go over every single card left in Kobolds and Catacombs. Thanks guys. Thanks for making it to the end of the video guys. I have links here for more content. And if you would like to see the channel grow, please click that subscribe button in the middle. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.